I want to share with you my exact process for creating a foam free long and low table arrangement and I want to talk you through the mechanics, give you my specific breakdown of the final recipe and yes I'm going to talk about pricing. And when it comes to learning how to design with chicken wire this is something that I struggled with for a really long time. So in this video I'm going to pass along some of my best tips and some of the best tricks that I learned that actually made the transition away from flower foam to chicken wire so much easier. When I did my formal floristry certification, we used flower foam in everything. So then I had to kind of relearn how to design the work I wanted to design without using flower foam and using more sustainable and environmentally friendly techniques. So this approach that I have landed on in terms of how to use chicken wire in table arrangements is something that I absolutely love. And I know that it can feel like such an incredible struggle to kind of move away from flower foam and make the transition to chicken wire. And it's something that I was so frustrated with for a long period of time until I found a couple of very specific tips that were really helpful. So that's why I thought it would be super useful to put this video together. In addition to that, I know it can be such a struggle to figure out exactly how many flowers do I need to create this kind of recipe, how many flowers do I need if the container is this size, and how the heck do I price this whole thing. So that's exactly what we're going to talk through in this video. I'm going to share my exact how in terms of the mechanics and give you my favorite tips so that you can start designing with chicken wire with more confidence. I'm also going to talk through my exact design process, talk about placements, my thought process around placements, and just go through it step by step so that you can replicate this design if you want to. And having said all of that as well, I am going to give you the final recipe and I have also linked the container below. And lastly, we're also going to talk about pricing so that the whole process becomes way easier for you. Now, enough jibber jabber. Let's just get right into the good stuff. Let's talk through the mechanics. So this is the container that I found. It's actually a cutlery drawer organizer. I'll throw the dimensions up on the screen so that you have them. When it comes to using chicken wire, I just use the standard stuff that you can find at the home supply store. And one of the things that I have learned that's been really helpful for me is that I like to have lots of layers of chicken wire within the container. So when I find it tricky, when I find it challenging, it's 99% of the time because I don't have enough chicken wire in the container. So if you're really struggling with the placements, if you're struggling with trying to figure out how to get your flowers to stay where you put them, Use this technique where you can roll the chicken wire in on itself and create a few different layers of chicken wire before you then actually put it in to the container. And because we're all a bunch of overachieving floristry students, don't forget as well to also then tape, use a few pieces of tape to then place over the container so that your chicken wire stays in place. When it comes to the design process, one of my favorite hacks is to actually elevate the container so that you're looking at it from the same angle that your customer is gonna be looking at it. This is just an upturned bucket and then my Lazy Susan on top and then I will put the vessel directly on top. The Lazy Susan is also super helpful because it helps you quickly see all the sides of the arrangement without having to pick it up and move it around. When it comes to starting your placements, it's definitely worth taking a moment at the beginning and prioritizing the process of covering up your mechanics. One of the things about floristry is that we need to go out of our way to make this work look like magic. And part of that process is to go in and very intentionally cover up your base mechanics. So in this instance, I'm using a combination of flowering viburnum and stock. And you'll actually notice that these stock stems are quite delicate, they're quite small. There's lots of different heads per stem, which I absolutely love in terms of covering up the chicken wire. Another thing that I'll do that's a little bit not conventional is I will actually take focal flowers and use them as a way to cover up some of the base mechanics. 
So in this case, using a couple of the Pink Floyd roses, peeling the petals back. So they are quite substantial in terms of the visual volume that they take up in this arrangement. But instead of waiting to put your focals in at the very end, I do like taking a handful very sparsely, taking some of your focal flowers and using them to actually cover your base mechanics. One thing to keep in mind though is that you can't then put flowers through where you've put a focal flower. So you can't actually like put a stem through the head of the rose. So you really are needing to be mindful in terms of those placements. This is one of the biggest reasons I love using chicken wire over flower foam is that if you don't like the placements of those early roses, you can quickly and very easily pull those roses out of the base of the container and move them around. This is one of the single best benefits of using chicken wire versus flower foam because with foam, you definitely have to have it in the right place to begin with because you don't want to be pulling flowers out and then putting them back in the foam again. With this chicken wire process, you can pull flowers out, put them in, put them in a different placement, try it again, move things around 15 different times and you're not gonna damage the stems. They're still gonna be able to drink up enough water and the mechanics will stay in place. By the way, if you're enjoying these tips so far, be sure to hit the like button so I know. 
So that you have the final recipe, if you want to do an arrangement in this size of container, this kind of texture and color palette, here is the official list. Two stems of flowering viburnum, five stems of stock, three spray roses, three mini gerbs, five Pink Floyd roses, four double tulips, and then three stems of forget-me-nots. And let's talk about how to price this arrangement in your flower business. The simple formula that you're going to use, because I'm going to assume that this is for a wedding or event, so you're going to take your wholesale amount, multiply that times five. So in this instance, the wholesale flowers total up to $48. The container is another $8. And when you do the math, it works out to be $280 plus tax and delivery. And I hope that this step-by-step -step design tutorial for a long and low foam-free flower arrangement has been helpful. Remember, you have total permission to go in and take this recipe, adapt it, adjust it, change it completely. Just know that I will A, link it below, and B, you have total permission to go out there and copy and paste this approach. And if you're somebody who wants to learn even more about building a thriving and profitable flower business, then you need to check out this video. I'm talking through my exact approach in terms of how to confidently navigate customer complaints, taking out some of the fear and giving you my step-by-step -step process in terms of how to respond and how to just take some of the pain away from the process. Thanks so much for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one.